look around you, look around you, look around you and see the beautiful blue skies. It is wonderful Wednesday. And let me tell you why it's so wonderful. <gasps> Lucy Harris is here, so it <laughs> makes it wonderful. And there's the blue skies in her book. Look at that, guys. Look at that. We have Lucy with me. I'm so excited. I needed a dose of Lucy so bad. It's kind of like, you know, you say, well, I'm just not feeling good. And your granny will say, well, let me get you some milk of magnesia. <laughs> I needed some Lucy. <laughs> Needed some Lucy. And I needed some Sherry. You've got a yes. book coming out yeah. that is The Butterfly Writes Across the Sky. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. me why. Oh goodness, it's a it's just a long story. I never ever wanted to write poetry. It, it is it's a book of poetry. Mm -hmm. um, but through about twelve years ago, three really good friends, and one of them might have been you, I'm not sure. There were three friends of mine who were really going through some things that there was nothing they could do. There was nothing I could do. And when that happens to me and I get really upset, I go out in the woods. I have this special place that I go to and I just go, why? No yeah. one can hear me. Yeah. I yeah. yell and carry yeah. on. Yeah. So yeah. I was in the middle of that and all of a sudden, I can't say that I, I heard words or saw words in my head, but there were words and they were just really powerful. So I just said them out loud and when I said them out loud I I knew it was a poem for my friends Wow! and so I was about a half a mile from home and I do not trust my mind to remember a lot of yeah, stuff yeah. I'm a so, post-it note girl <laughs> and, it, I, I, and I had nothing you know yeah, so yeah. I just started yelling the words out loud and running for the house and I just said them over and over and over again I get to the yard and Rick looks up like <laughs> What's wrong? You know, and I said, e everything's fine. Poem. You know, and I ran to the house. He's used to me, so he just let me go. And I sat down at the computer and, and I wrote this poem. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to my friends, and they, they really liked it. And mm -hmm. I've been writing ever since then. That's Little crazy. did I know at that time that the, that poem was going to end up the first line of it is the title of the book, The Butterfly Writes Across the Sky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I didn't know that I was just going to continue to write day after day after day. And I never have stopped, but I, this will always be my favorite poem because it was the first one. Mm -hmm. The butterfly writes across the sky. The poet writes of the butterfly. The sun shines, rain falls from above to make a rainbow, expressing God's love. So buzzing bees tickle the ears, hinting of sweetness in dusty tears. The heart has pages meant for turning from cold despair to fiercest burning as one sun circles, withdrawing its light to allow the stars to prick the night. Awaken the muse, dance round the flame, embracing blessing and honoring pain. Wow. Is that a perfect one? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I wow. just couldn't believe it when I wrote that, you know. And just, nobody knows pain like a mother who lost a child. That's true. Nobody knows pain like a mother who survived the loss of a child. You were lucky enough that you had a community surrounding oh, you. Gosh encouraging you, lifting you. I will mm -hmm. never forget pulling up in downtown LJ the day of Noah's service. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a parking place in the whole town. Mm -hmm. every, there were cars from everywhere. There were people from everywhere. There were military cars. There were, and yellow it was ribbons. like the whole world had come to honor your son. Yeah, the whole world had come to honor your son. Last week, I found a newspaper article, and I really meant to bring it today, and I left it laying there on the chest of drawers. And it's of a picture of me that was in the Pickens County Progress when Linda from Ella J called and said, hey, we're making yellow ribbons. Will you help? Mm -hmm. And we said, of course we will. Mm -hmm. And then, then we lost David Collins, and then McKaysville lost, um, what was his name, Jared? And, and, mm -hmm. and it just was on and on. Those, those ribbons kept honoring those men who gave it all. You know that I get mad, emotional, and angry as 9-11 hits because the man who masterminded 
the, the worst thing that ever happened on American soil, has not been sentenced yet, is sitting down there getting three meals a day and being treated like royalty, and it really angers me. Your son joined the military because of 9-11. Right. 9-11 was the turning point in your life forever. It was. It was, it, that was the moment. I will never forget, no matter yeah. what anybody yeah. says, yeah. Yeah. I will never forget yeah. it. So I think yes. we need to go to Congress and we need to tell them, whoever's running Gitmo, and if it's the idiots in D.C., and if you haven't listened to the song, Rich Men North of Richmond, you need to do it again and again and again because there's a bunch of rich men north of Richmond ruining America. They have not sentenced this man. He should have death. There's nothing any any different. <clears throat> and, and they're going to give him a deal if he tells them this and that. I don't care. Yeah. Sentence him to death. Be done with it. Be done with it. But he's sitting there. How many years later? Mm -hmm. You know, how many meals has he had? How many sunsets has he enjoyed? How many sunrises has he enjoyed? Why did we allow that? Yeah. It changed so many lives. It did. So it many did. lives. I know that you fought to stop Noah from going because you just said, son, you're my only child. Think about it. Well, I didn't really fight him. No, I didn't mean. I mean, I didn't because, mean fight. <laughs> because I mean, he was bigger than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was so sweet about it. He just said, "Mama, you don't want to steal my dream, do you?" Oh my gosh. And what can you say? You know, you can't. and I mean, yeah. he he believed in everything that is in our hearts about the highest vision of America, and I think he would tell you today that he would defend that guy who was. Mm -hmm. Sadly, he, he would. Noah yes, would defend yes, his would. right. He yeah. would yeah. to the very end. Well, we have given him his rights, and I understand all that. His rights just have been exhausted. Just do it. Just do it. Just don't make us think that we're keeping him up. Just do it. But, but we are looking at a time right now where um, I, I think about when they did the Afghanistan pullout and they left all the soldiers who... I don't was, think I try. I've written yeah, about that in yeah. here. I don't want to think about it. It, it is so sad and it is so hard because you're not alone. <laughs> I'm not alone. There are so many... We have so many friends who also buried a child. That is the hardest thing ever. But to express your love for your country still today, your love for humanity still today, mm -hmm. that speaks volumes in your words. Mm -hmm. and, and your words are coming to reality. Well, That's I'm, a big I'm really deal. excited That's about it. That's a big it. deal. I, I learned uh, so much from Noah about poetry because when we were we were getting ready to write the book about his life, we, we just couldn't help ourselves. We had to do it. It just uh -huh. came bubbling bubbling out of us and we went through all of his journals that were all about working out and what you should eat and all kinds of how weight lifting and mm -hmm. things like that but then there would be a line of a poem and then 10 pages later there would be another line and after a while I went one day I that this when it really connected I went oh that line goes with that line and then we started really looking at his journals and we found some some beautiful beautiful gems so uh -huh. that's right in the very the very center of the uh -huh. book I mean uh -huh. the exact page and we didn't exactly plan it that way because Rick is the one um, who did the book layout uh -huh. I, I, I made it I, I never is wanted is this an actual picture of a blue sky yeah it is an actual okay. picture okay. all right and, and where is this blue sky uh, somewhere over LJ uh -huh. I think uh -huh. yeah <laughs> And, and every single day, even if the skies are cloudy, you know that the blue skies are coming back. That's right. You know, you That's know they're right. going to come back. And even though you're going through the worst time of your life, you know that the blue skies are coming back. That's right. Yeah. And the butterflies up there writing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. all you have to do is look up. Yeah. Now, who was your publisher? Rick. He did Well, it all. actually, um, it's published at Amazon. Mm -hmm. what, what happened was... I, I always told everybody I'm not doing a book. I'm having too much fun. I put a poem up every day on Facebook. Uh -huh. I still do that uh -huh. with an illustration. I like to take pictures, but also there are a lot of great artists in this town uh -huh. who are just so generous with their work. So like today I have a picture up uh, that was painted by Candy Crawford Day. It just, uh -huh. just happened to uh -huh. work out that way. And, uh, and so I, I would tell people, I don't know if I'll ever do a book. And then last fall, a couple of people who had asked me many times before, okay, when's the book coming? Uh -huh. I just told one of them, I think I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she was like, 
good. Good. Go good. do it. So good. it kind of cooked in my head. I was really busy getting ready for Thanksgiving and Christmas uh -huh. and all that stuff that uh -huh. you do. But uh, around Christmas time, I, I said, okay, I'm going to get started. So it, it, it was worse than any term paper <laughs> that I ever assigned to any of my students. It was horrifying because I had just written and written and written and written. And so what I did was I went through everything that I have written, mm -hmm. which I, I didn't get through all of it. I delete, had to delete a lot of stuff, but I started to, to put it together and I went, oh, I'll, okay, I see what this is going to be a year. Kind of like, kind of follows mm -hmm. the seasons of our lives here mm -hmm. in our wonderful country, you know. And uh, so I'm working, I tell Rick, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna be busy every day. And I mean, picture me, I was at the computer from really early till, you know, just as, until I couldn't see straight anymore, you know. And he knew I was doing it, but it didn't really click in his head until about six weeks ago. And about six weeks ago, he said, well, let me read some of this, you know. And he started going through it and he said, this is going to be good. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to publish it cuz we checked with some publishers and you know we it, it, it takes a long time to go the traditional uh -huh. route. I mean uh -huh. years. So we just wanted to publish a book that we could uh, I could share with my friends uh -huh. like with you uh -huh. and you know people and he I'm not he he's pretty good at techie stuff. Uh -huh. But he went out to something called KDP Amazon, mm -hmm. and he just did all their uh, videos and the things he couldn't figure out. He went out to YouTube, mm -hmm. and he started working. And he said, I, I can do this. I'm wow. going to do this. And, and, and he really can. And he it was works amazing. cheap. Well, at, oh yeah, oh yeah, I have to cook, you know, he, he gets whatever he wants yeah. for, for meals. But uh, there was a day when he was sitting there and he was trying to upload it. I can't understand exactly what was going on. And I have never seen my sweet husband be so frustrated. And yet, you know, usually, you know, I have seen him take a chainsaw and just throw it down the hill. Mm -hmm. This, he couldn't throw anything down the hill. He just had to kind of just keep working at it, working at it. And the very next day, I don't know, somehow or other, he he figured it all out, and yeah. that was six weeks ago. So this has really That's made fast, my head. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, and it, and it is God's perfect timing because we are approaching 9-11. And so as a gift to your loved ones, as a gift to maybe somebody who's serving in the military, as a gift to somebody who lost somebody, this is a great gift mm -hmm. to remember that 9-11 changed many, many lives. Well, Many, many lives. And that, Every, every single one of the poems in this book, and most, I mean, Noah's right in the middle, and there, there is, of course, a section, uh, you know, Memorial Day, mm -hmm. Independence Day, mm -hmm. and Veterans Day, and I, f I feel really special about the month of September and August, that particular area, because of 9-11 and also Afghanistan. Those, those are months where... I stop and I really ponder mm -hmm. some things and I think it's very symbolic because we're starting to head into uh, autumn mm -hmm. and, and Veterans Day and then on into the holidays. That's kind of how the book worked. Mm -hmm. uh, when he looked at it, uh, he said, you know, it really needs chapters. I didn't want to have chapters. I, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm not going to write a book. I'm not going to have chapters, all this kind of stuff, you know. And he said, no, it needs chapters. And for some reason, I don't know, it just bubbled out of my heart right then from Ecclesiastes. So, so the very first uh, chapter is called A Time to Begin. And then it goes all the way through to A Time to End, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so the it, what, what I started out by saying is that each of the poems in this book were pretty much inspired by someone mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. I get up early in the morning and I just get right into the Word first of all. And then I meditate. I've told a lot of people med meditation really helps. Mm -hmm. Just breathe. Mm -hmm. It's going to really help you. you know. And then right after that, I just let whatever happens happen. And it normally has to do with like that first time when I was out in the woods and I was praying for three people. There's somebody has touched my heart about something, you know, and 
it just starts to come together and and I work on that. So I, I want to say this to my friends out there. You will see yourself in this book. <laughs> I, I didn't out anybody. I didn't put any names on any yeah, of the poems. Yeah. But um, uh, I thank all of the people who have listened to me for 12 years, just kind of mm -hmm. out loud. And really since Noah, Noah passed, so many people have listened to me and loved me. Mm -hmm. That's, this town is, is just amazing. Uh, I think about people who are suffering loss right now. Some of my good friends have suffered some, some loss. And I think about how this wonderful place rallies around people. And that's definitely a part of what, what makes me keep writing and, and, and keep going forward. You know, when you look back at your students, 18 years, Lucy, 18 years. Noah's been gone 18 uh, years. That's hard for me. That's a whole lifetime for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Have, you is. know, you start school, you graduate, you move on with your life. That's that's 18 years. Yep. That's 18 years. Yes, Today, Noah would have been a father. You would mm -hmm. have been a grandmother. It would have been different. Life would have been so very different. But your young son believed in America. I know. He believed in America. He did. Nobody plans to be, I mean, I, I always say nobody plans to be a gold star parent, mm -hmm. but, but none of us plan to go through some of the, the things that we do go through. Mm -hmm. Some of them are really happy, but there are always going to be those things that really challenge your, your, your body, heart, mind, and soul. And I think that um, a poem can really help you with that. Um, Can I read another? You can. Okay, this is called Kind of Like a Cup of Coffee. A poem is never really finished, kind of like a life or a cup of coffee. Even after the last drop, it continues to whisper softly, spooning sugar in big piles beside a cauldron of clouds and cream, stirring dark subatomic particles into a hard grinding dream, heightening passions and ponders, and senses of all kind, it crowns bitterness with love, even as it regenerates minds. Best of all, it lurks in the nose, itching like a secret between friends, and you can pour it down the drain like rain, but like life, it never ends. And though it doesn't need a thank you, it's like that cup of coffee you adore. It leaves a stain on your brain. And you only want more. Wow. And, wow. Yeah. I have an old timey percolator that honestly <laughs> it is like almost an obsession with me. I love to hear it perk. It's and the I love to smell it. On the stove? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Me too. Every morning. And I love it. I love it because it just it gets that scent in the air and you hear that perky and you just it feels good. And I've done so many little short blippets with the coffee pot and put them on YouTube, and people are loving it, loving it, loving it. And it's an old-timey percolator, a simple cup of coffee. A simple cup of coffee can set the tone for the day. Do you know what saucering coffee was? Saucering. My grandmother, oh. who was country, country, yes. Dawsonville, had a coffee mug about this big. But she would look at her sister Bessie and say, well, it's too hot. We'll have to saucer it. And she would pour a little bit in her saucer and sip out right. of her saucer. I have seen So it would cool quickly. That. And I said, I would love to have some of my grandmother's words in poetry. Because mm -hmm. those words are not spoken today. People mm -hmm. don't say, I'm going to saucer my coffee. <laughs> they just don't do it because life has changed so fast. Everybody's drinking out of a darn Starbucks cup. Except me. And, and it's so weird because I still use the old dishes. I still use the old coffee pot. I love to cook in my old, old dishes. There's something familiarity is what makes you make it through those hard times. Right. You living on the property where your son was born. I know. You being there where your son is today. It's a, it's, that's really a gift. I that's mean, a gift. Rick and I have to, I mean, we often go, okay, we just need to pinch ourselves <laughs> that we get to be here mm -hmm. in this uh, beautiful setting. I mean, it, feel, it, it, it feels like a great church to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we just have these big, tall poplar trees, and there's a little stream running around, and Noah's right there. Mm -hmm. 
His ashes are right where we know where they are. And some of his friends have come and they, they put rocks. And it, it's just, I, I tell people that I'm, I'm going to go out and walk the stones for you today. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Some people go, don't, don't step on any stones for me. And I go, no, no, that, that's just my expression. Mm -hmm. But we have just nice little prayer walk mm -hmm. that we do mm -hmm. many times, mm -hmm. sometimes. Just depends on what's going on, you know. But it is, we're I so love, blessed. I love that you display that you, even you, go out in the woods and scream. Oh, yeah. Because I have... I've gone through and I and I think oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I should have. I needed to release that. Yeah. It's important to release whatever's hurting and whatever's angry and and it's it's hard. But but to know <clears throat> when my husband was dying of cancer, I was very quiet around him and I wouldn't cry around him. But if he was gone, um, like if if one of his friends took him on a little ride around town, I would take that time to take a shower and I would stand in the shower and I would scream. I would just scream and I would just like, why? He's so young, he's so healthy, yeah. why? You know, yeah. everybody has to release that you because do. if you don't, it hurts. It you hurts. sure don't want to push that down. <coughs> no, no. Because it, it will come out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it will change your life. Yeah, you, yeah. You've got well, to get it out. I want to come to storytelling and I, I was going to tell yeah. you a story that I, w I would like to tell there. Um, my husband was a big, a big guy and uh, wore a size 14 wedding ring. And I remember when they sized his ring, they said, golly. <laughs> I said, yeah, he's a big boy. And um, as he was losing his life to cancer, I would drive him around in the white avalanche and we'd go, you know, and he'd be sitting over here with his little pajamas on and, and he wasn't able to do anything, right. but he wanted to get out and go. Mm -hmm. So we were in uh, Blue Ridge one day and I pulled up, and my husband was a Diet Coke-aholic and a bargain hunter. And mm. anybody who knew him, it was Diet Coke and a bargain hunter. <clears throat> and I pulled up, and I was pumping gas, and the first thing about him I said was, Sugar, I hate to pump gas. You'll always have to pump my gas. Well, he owned a gas station, so who else would you marry? So <laughs> anyway, I, I always mm -hmm. hated pumping gas. Well, he's sitting over here in the avalanche, and I'm pumping gas, and I looked in, and I said, Yes, I said they've got diet cokes on sale, two forty nine a twelve pack, two forty nine. I'm gonna stock up, and I finished pumping the gas, and I started to close the door, and I said I'm gonna run in, and he said, No, please don't. I said, What do you mean, please don't? Because this is the bargain hunter of the year. He's he's a bargain hunter. And diet coke. And and diet coke was his thing, and I said, No, it's two forty nine. You didn't understand. You see the sign? It's two forty nine. He said, Please don't do that. He said, if you back up and load the vehicle with drinks, people will look at me and think that I'm sorry because mm -hmm. I'm not getting out loading the vehicle for you. That's so sweet. And I thought to myself, at his point, he died the next Friday. Mm -hmm. At his point of dying, he still cared about me enough to know that he didn't want people to think that he wasn't doing for me. <gasps> And I think about that a lot. And I think we had our moments and, you know, everybody has their moments. They and do. And, but never once did I ever doubt being loved, never mm -hmm. once. And that day I looked at him and I said, sugar, I'll just get a few. And I got like six mm -hmm. instead of loading, doing what I would have right. done and bought a whole truck the whole truck <laughs> whole truck load. But, but, but we see things in people that I didn't think about it was going to hurt him or harm him or worry him or stress him because I was going to buy drinks on sale. And it did. It touched his heart and he knew that. He didn't want people to see him sitting there and his wife loading drinks. Sherry, thought, you, need you, to, you need to write some poetry. Wow. I mean, I, 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 can, I, can see, I can see all, you've said so many lines and words today that would be. It was, it was weird. And you've got it recorded. It keeps so when you go back, back and to listen me, it to it. It keeps coming back to me about how the things that you do around others can affect them in a good way or a bad way. Right, that's a and, choice. And that is a choice you make. Right. Do you do you hurt somebody or do you help somebody? Mm -hmm. And I think that day, I, I think I thought, I never thought about hurting him by doing that. But right. it was hurtful. Right. It was hurtful, yeah. And I, I saw that in his eyes and I was just, oh my God. And it was, you know, the next Friday we said goodbye and I gotta tell this story and this is so funny. My husband did not like cats. Did not like cats. Kind of runs in my, <clears throat> did not like my cats. dad's family. And so 
Kevin Roper, God love your soul, comes to get my husband after his death, and they're loading him up, and they mm. start to put him in the hearse, mm. and a cat has jumped in the hearse. Oh, no. And I, I cracked up. <laughs> we were out on the farm at my brother and sister-in-law's, and a red, a little red cat had Aww. jumped in the hearse, and I cracked up. I said, now, I can just hear J.S. Martin laughing right then. But at every moment in life, you see something that you either smile about, you cry about, you forever remember it, or you try hard to forget it. Right. But every single moment of life, you're going to be affected by what happens right here, right now. And you need to remember those things. And I remember that cat. I needed that laughter. I mean, I had just, the love of my life just died. Mm -hmm. And I needed that laughter and that cat. And I like, oh my God, you know, and I said, I shouldn't be laughing, but it was hysterically funny because my husband would have kicked the cat. <gasps> you cat people. He, he <laughs> would have been after he the cat. He would have kicked the cat. Yeah, to kick well. the cat out. But, but life brings us moments that often the perfect words come, and sometimes there are no words for what you're going through. That's true. Then there you are be no quiet. Words. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, that's, I think for most of us, that's the hardest thing to just, that's why I say, try to meditate. Just do some stillness every day. Just breathe and calm yourself and, and wait. Mm -hmm. and, let, and let what you truly are emerge, you know, and then you won't be kicking cats, no, right? No, no, no. <laughs> it's so funny because he, he did not like cats. Y'all, he did not like cats. That's funny. When you, when you meditate, how, do you have a time frame? Do you set aside 30 minutes? What do you, how do you do that? I, I just kind of go with the flow, but I, you know, I know a lot of people are really busy. So I write these little things. I'll send you one tomorrow mm -hmm. morning. Okay. I do one, I do one pretty much <coughs> every day. And it's just really eight to 10 breaths. Oh, wow. You know, where you, um, you t inhale deeply and then on the exhale, you whisper a line and then you inhale and do the same thing and it's something that if I do it by the time I get to the end I, I'm, I'm ready to be still or I'm ready to write I'm ready to meditate more mm -hmm. if I'm in a hurry I'm ready to go mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it just depends and we we call around my house we call them breathers mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. a little breather every morning and you're gonna feel a lot better Interesting. You know, yeah. It is. Yeah. We might do a little book of that at yeah. some point. Yeah. You know. But. Now, in the book, what are people going to be looking for? Is there something now? Noah's part. Can we go to Noah's part? Okay, by Noah the journey. Yes. Can we read a little of that? Oh. Oh. Well, I could. How about? Um, I'll just tell the story of what okay. these poems are okay. about, and then I, I could pick up my ukulele. Okay. But, okay. So, um, I. I Again, Noah taught me so much about writing because of how he went after it. And really pretty much my style of writing is his style because I edited all of his poems to start with and the way I laid them out, it, it just, when we started laying out this book, that's, mm -hmm. he kind of dictated mm -hmm. how it was gonna go. And the way the book goes, there are 12 chapters for you know, 12 months mm -hmm. in the year, 12 mm -hmm. chapters, and his is right, his is right in the middle. And how each chapter goes is there are poems and then a song, mm -hmm. poems and then a song, because my dad was a civil engineer and he said, you always need a relief from the regular. So mm -hmm. that's why poems and then a song to mm -hmm. break it, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I was working on Noah's uh, last spring, I was working on his section and I thought, oh goodness, there, there really isn't a song. He didn't write a song that I know of. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden my eyes just went across one of his poems that kind of has a story with it. Mm -hmm. And the story of this poem is that it wasn't in a journal. It was a poem that he had posted on poetry.com mm -hmm. and he called his cousin David and he said, David, look, I just put up the best poem I've ever written and he, he's going to deploy the next day. And he said, wow. I want you to wait a little while and I want you to get the poem, print it for mom and dad, you know, send it to them. And David was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. And then as way leads on to way, you know, 
Noah got killed, and then to David, that became a mission in life mm -hmm. to find that poem. Mm -hmm. And it's a big, big website, so he went there so many times. He was so frustrated. He told us all about this, how, how torn up he was about it. And why it. didn't he do it when Noah first asked him to? Well, I think he went the very, okay. and he didn't find it the okay. very first time. He thought, that's okay. When Noah gets back, we'll find mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a big deal. Right. That poem's out there. Noah yep. knows it. Yep. He wasn't worried about it. But mm -hmm. when Noah was killed, it, it became wow. something really important wow. for him to do. So he, he kind of ha had set himself, I mean, he was wearing himself out with it. He was staying up all night sometimes looking mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. this poem. And he finally realized, I've got to just let go of it. I'm going to look, you know, basically gave himself some parameters. I'm going to look this many more times. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> on the very last time, he found, it. he found it. Of course, it would be the very last time because he did find it. But <clears throat> he said it was really scary. Wow. You know, he had... He had it booted up and then had to hit the button, and, mm -hmm. and there it was. Wow. You know? Wow. So um, I never, he, he sent it to us. We loved it. We put it in, in the original in the original book. It's called At Last. And I don't know, I was getting ready uh, to, the Memorial Day ceremony committee had asked me if I would sing a song, one of Noah, you know, something about Noah or whatever. And I just, I, I said, okay, I'll do one song. And then I knew I had to do, I had to find Noah's song. Mm -hmm. And so that, when I saw that poem at last again, I, I instantly went, that's it right there. And I hardly had to change, you know, I had to move like a word or two around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, now it's... Now, oh, and it's, how did you end up with a ukulele? Well... I don't, this is so crazy. I would have never done any of this. And that's what I, I was telling Sherry when we were talking before the show that I don't know what would have happened to my life if it hadn't turned out the way it had, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think about it because I, I'm just a gold star mom mm -hmm. and that's what I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, it might sound crazy, but I'm very grateful for these 18 years, for this, for this beautiful walk mm -hmm. that I've been on and for being surrounded by people like Sherry and patriotic people everywhere who still keep in touch with me, Noah's men, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I, I hope someday I can sing this song to them on Memorial Day. But anyway, on Memorial Day, I thought, oh, this is going to be really scary. And it, it was just the most blessed experience. The wind was blowing. I don't know if y'all remember, but on Memorial Day, it was so cold this year. The wind was wow. blowing. I mean, my hair was like going all <laughs> over the place. And, but, um, you know, there were people from LAJ surrounding me, and I just felt at such peace. So mm -hmm. I was able to do it, and, and I didn't cry. Yeah. And, and I, I, I try, mm -hmm. you know, I try not to cry, but this is called. At Last by Noah Harris. Far away places pull at my mind, whispering softly, make much of time, reminding me while they're gonna last. My life too soon is a thing of the past. Like the leaves living on a solemn oak tree, the oak will remain, but the green is set free. Each second that passes is one less to spend. The clock will keep ticking long past my end. And the one thing I know that can't be a lie it's hard to hold on when it's all passing by. Like a tumbleweed, I'll ride on the wind. I'll go where it blows and I will not contend. I'll pull up my roots with no word, walk away. And when it's my time, I'll just 
fly away when it's my time I'll just fly away wow wow no I had no idea no. No, no, I had no idea when he left. I'm sure he's when laughing he left right Elmer now. County. His mama singing his song. I hope wow. so. Wow. Yes. Wow. Well, yeah. okay, we're going to take a commercial break and then we're going to go to a little bit of footage that was a special honoring Noah Harris. We'll be back shortly. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. The ETC Game of the Week is back again this football season. Watch your local teams go head-to-head -head each week only on ETC TV3. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel. Or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Uh, 
such a hoss and so muscular that uh, he found himself at a basketball game in a conversation with some people that uh, a girl that was mm-hmm. trying out for cheerleading um, and at Georgia at Georgia and she, and she was in need of a partner because she didn't have anyone to help her stun or do the things that she needed to learn in order to make the tryouts and um, she asked Noah if he would help and he said well yeah sure so they arranged to meet at um, a gym over in Gainesville and he went over there and um, just helped her I guess do some of the stunts and the moves and things like that and and said oh that was interesting you know didn't think much of it and then went back the next weekend um, to meet her there for a second session and he got stood up and uh, he called me and said, Dad, nobody's here, you know. And I said, well, he said, you know, come on home, you know. And uh, as it turned out, we got home, we started talking about it. And I said, you're going to Georgia? I said, uh, you're a big boy. I said, do you ever think about trying out for cheerleading? He goes, that's kind of interesting. He said, right, maybe, maybe I'll think about that. And he and I... Uh, looked into it and then went over and spent a weekend over there um, while they had the tryouts and um, and he just was a walk on and uh, went through all the routines and did all the stuff and at the end of the weekend um, he also saw the girl that stood him up too but at the end of the weekend um, Noah made the cut and she didn't. I teach a lot of ninth grade kids and the, the kids sometimes get put out to the side. When they get to high school or middle school, some of our parents, or sometimes even I, want to throw my hands up and say, how do I do this? It's so hard. Uh, Rick and Lucy Harris stayed involved in Noah's life. Whether it was drama, whether it was cheerleading in college, and especially on the wrestling mat, they were there supporting him. They didn't try to make him be what they wanted. They allowed him to develop into the young man that he was going to become. And their involvement, I think, was the greatest parent skill they could do. They constantly supported and loved and encouraged. The discipline occurred at an earlier age, and now it was a matter of helping this young man become the man that he was going to be. He had a great mentor in uh, Earl Leonard, vice president of Coca-Cola, and, um, and then Gene um, Anderson. And Gene Anderson from Highwood Properties. Um, they were personally mentoring Noah saying, as soon as you graduate, you're going to come right in here and join us. And, and Noah ended up uh, majoring in, mil- in real estate. So he, he was going that route. But 9-11 happened, and uh, I don't know. It was something that just clicked with him. Mm-hmm. And, and when we look back, we realized, wow, you know, that's something that was there all along because roaming around in the woods and the yards, he loved to dress up in camo and have toy guns and I mean he he just I don't know it was not unfamiliar with to him you know to um, but it was a real subliminal thing he had never never said a word about the military at all and Rick is a Vietnam vet and he had said many words about why he didn't want him to go in as an enlisted man all his life he said no you're you're gonna go to college you don't need to do that. Well, the world was different when Rick was talking yeah, to him in that way. And my father is World War II. Um, he was in France for three years in a foxhole, basically. And my grandfather and Rick's father, even though Noah never met him, Rick's father had polio as a young man, but he went into the military anyway and they took him and he served in world war ii and so noah heard all this stuff in the background while he was telling him now you don't want to enlist and then it just kind of when 9 11 happened he had just been in the leadership program for several years at uh, the university of georgia and he had written a lot of things. I'm so grateful because there's so many things online that the uh, Terry College of Business has posted. They had Noah's journals. He had posted them all online, and he was talking about what leadership was about and what it meant to him to serve uh, humanity. I mean, he had made that decision. I mean, he left behind some beautiful pieces where he just questioned existence 
and came to the realization that um, even though he couldn't answer all of those questions, he knew what his destiny was and that that was to serve. I think and they call that so the defining focused. moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's that after 9-11, that defining moment happened to him and things just started falling in place mm -hmm. and he realized also that he said, I, I would much rather uh, serve my country, serve a higher purpose. Um, I found my passion here and I'm not sitting behind the desk too. I mean, he really liked being out and, and being involved in all the activities that a military person went through. He blossomed in that experience. I mean, that's our, our sole consolation in this event was that Noah was doing what he wanted to do. And Two wonderful things happened to him in the last year of his life. He met, well, actually, in the last two years, he met Ashley Case, his fiance, <coughs> and he really, he dated a lot of girls when he was in school, but it was always, he always had in mind, I've got to accomplish a lot of things first. I mean, he was never very serious about dating. I mean, he was serious about girls, but not about getting serious. And then he met Ashley, and uh, and then he joined the ROTC program, and he just, he it was so wonderful to watch. We couldn't we couldn't hardly stop him. Rick tried to say, well, hun, don't go in the infantry now, you know, because you same, could get... Same thing. I told him playing football. I said, son, you got some massive legs. Funny. You could be a great punter. Well, <laughs> so he he's plays fullback and linebacker. I mean, so, you know, I was telling him, I was praising, oh, you could be a supply officer. <laughs> you could and learn logistics. And then when you come out, you can transfer that to the corporate world. And, and he was having none of it. He was well, he, he's very nice to his dad. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. He yeah. looked into all of those things, and then yeah. he was commissioned as an infantry officer, and he was so thrilled. I've just, and then it, it really was like destiny was just right there behind him because he really wasn't supposed to get into the third infantry, but all a series of things happened. He really wasn't supposed to get his own uh, platoon, and then. That happened, and I mean, it was just one thing right after another. So I, I'm just so, um, I'm very sad because I miss him, but I, I know he outran me. I know that he was really after his destiny. He was focused. He knew what he was doing. He was completely clear about it, and wow. I, I can't mean, think, I'm in awe. I can't help but think of Noah as a shooting star, you know, yeah. I mean, we're, we're uh, sitting here with this long <laughs> lifespan, and Noah was just this beautiful yep. shooting star that, that um, had a great life and great experience. And it, it, the thing is, we just didn't realize it was gonna be quite so short. I think about the moment of, of his death and the choice that he made, and I know that he was so confident physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and that's why he was able to do what other people might not have been able to do. He was under fire, and instead of running from the danger, he turned right toward it and faced it. And, I mean, I am in awe of my son. We see that full measure and the strength of this nation in the men and women in uniform who fight this war. And we have given, who've given their lives in the cause of liberty and freedom. One of these soldiers was a young lieutenant named Noah Harris, who was killed last summer in Iraq when his Humvee was hit by a roadside bomb. Noah grew up here in Georgia. He graduated from the University of Georgia. He volunteered for the Army after September the 11th, 2001. He told his dad that people had an obligation to serve a cause higher than themselves. In Iraq, Lieutenant Harris was an officer known for his toughness and his skill in battle and for the beanie babies that he carried with him to hand out to the Iraqi children. He was also known for the photo of his parents' home in the Elijay that he used as a screensaver on his computer. When his troops asked why he chose that picture, he explained, that is why I'm here. Lieutenant Harris understood the stakes in Iraq. He knew that to protect his loved ones at home, 
America must defeat our enemies overseas. If America pulls out of Iraq before the Iraqis can defend themselves, the terrorists will follow us here home. The best way to honor the memory of brave Americans like Lieutenant Harris is to complete the mission they began so we will stay, we will fight, and we will win in Iraq. Okay, this weekend you're going to get to meet Miss Lucy Harris at a book signing. Tell yes. us about it. Okay, so the book signing is at Gilmer Arts Theater at 2 o'clock from 2 to 4 on Saturday. And I'm going to do a little poetry, a little song, and some few remarks at 2 o'clock, kind of sharpish. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just sign some books. And Good. the book is $15 and cash and and a check's great. Uh, they also have an electronic way of, of, <coughs> of taking money at Gilmer Arts. And that, you know, I, I, I'm really excited about it. Nice. What was it like for you to watch your child? Wasn't that a precious the, memory? Th this was really, <coughs> I, I just, I mean, the whole, that little video. Priceless. 18, that's Priceless. Like, yeah, my priceless. life. Yeah, I said it's it's so real to me because um, we keep seeing it over and over and over. And I said that's the great thing about what we do here at ETC. He was part of our community, and our community rallied around you and Rick, and and continued to do that. And I want to challenge everybody who watches, please, please rally around them Saturday, and please yeah. purchase a book so she can keep doing what she's doing yeah. because with you we still we can live with Noah because you're still doing what he would have wanted you to do well it's just Rick and I at first when he was killed we were thinking okay this is going to go away this is going to run its course in a in a few years and then we'll just go back to being just normal Americans mm -hmm. proud of our country living the way we've always lived but we're definitely just a gold star family, and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so we roll with that. Mm -hmm. And when people ask us to participate in things, we we follow Noah's motto, which is "I do what I can." Mm -hmm. you just if we all would just do what you just can. do do, what do you that. Can. It doesn't matter. I mean, we've had some tough times in our country, mm -hmm. uh, and I I really always say that 9/11, uh, we saw the end of the world as we knew it, but also the beginning of mm -hmm. something new. Mm -hmm. And it really is up to all of us to just to, to remember who we are mm -hmm. and remember the wonderful values that have made our country so great. I mean, right. that's what Noah gave his life for. He was willing to do that. And I, I just feel in my heart that he wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, he would do it again. When we think about the song that Alan Jackson wrote, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning? I know exactly where I was. You know exactly where you were. We all know exactly the moment we came together as Americans. We were flying flags. We were holding hands. We were praying together. We didn't discriminate at all. Right now they're trying to shove discrimination down our throat, which is such a joke. It is such a joke. We have good friends, old friends, new friends, black friends, orange friends, green friends, yellow friends. We got friends of all That's of it. all nationalities. Yes. And they can't take that from us. And they're trying to do that. They're mm -hmm. trying to cause you know, hard feelings, and, and that's crazy. And it's like the song that we've been promoting this week that I hope everybody's listening to. Um, Oliver Anthony is a young man from North Carolina who isn't a Republican, isn't a Democrat, but didn't like the way he saw the country going. And he wrote about rich men north of Richmond. He told the truth. And from that truth, his song is number one. He's been offered mega millions of contracts that he won't sign because he wants to stay true to himself. Right. If Noah were here today, he would be true to himself. I, and that's well, I like to think so. I, I, I like guarantee you he would. You raise that kind of boy, <laughs> that kind yes. of man who... You know, he could have gone on and gotten his degree from Georgia. He could have gone on and had a great job. He could have been corporate America. But he chose to do what he did because he had a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. He had a heart of gold. And, and today, well, we think he did. And we, today we celebrate him. We celebrate him. And, um, and all those like him, yeah. you know. Out of his platoon, all but two survived. Is that correct? Right. And, and he was and, one. Yeah. And, and Noah basically took the hit for everybody? 
Well, that that's a, a very small percentage of people actually were killed in action mm -hmm. because our army is is, is very professional mm -hmm. and takes care of it takes care of its own really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't know you know I just feel like it was Noah's destiny because be, from the time 9-11 happened everything in his life just went just like a clock ticking it was just wow. like a clock ticking and everything worked out the way that it was supposed to work out. He, he wasn't supposed to, you know, get into the third infantry, wasn't supposed to get a platoon. Mm -hmm. It just, so many things happened. It, it just kept moving forward, mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I, I just feel like he, he probably touched a lot of lives when he was in Iraq. I know he has certainly touched many, many lives here in his hometown mm -hmm. and, and his men who are scattered all across the country you know, they just keep in touch. They never forget Noah. They will mm -hmm. never forget him. They hold right. him in in their hearts, and as well as William, mm -hmm. who, who fell with him. And, and I always pray every day and hope everybody else will for Ski, his his driver, who mm -hmm. who sustained a lot of injuries, but he's, he's a good American. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of those guys, our, our first responders, all the people who are out there today willing you know, they, they put their lives in between us and all kinds of emergencies, mm -hmm. danger, mm -hmm. chaos, you name it. And <coughs> we should be backing them in every way. I, I, I certainly do. And I, I never miss an opportunity to say thank you for your service, for right. taking care of me, for yep. caring. That's right. Well, I'm going to challenge y'all, please. This weekend, Saturday, 2 o'clock, the Gilmer Arts and Heritage Association is right across the street from the Ella J office in downtown, right? Right. And you can go there and the for $15, theater. yes, for $15 you can pick up a copy of Miss Lucy's book and you can learn and you can reflect and you can use it for your meditation. So yes. I'm recommending that you do that. And this copy is mine. <laughs> And thank it's you, also, you, you. If, if, you, if you read the book, write a good review, and that way we'll just spread it. You there go you out go. to Amazon and just give it a little punch, and, and we'll keep going. I'll do that. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Please say a prayer. I have a doctor's appointment on Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock. We're getting all the test results back, and I'm getting nervous, excited, um, encouraged, and worried. <laughs> So did that cover I it all? Can, yes, I think so. <laughs> cover I, th it all? I, I have a good feeling. I have it. a good feeling. I just, I'm praying, I'm praying. There's some issues to deal with, but we're going to deal with them. And Amen. that's what we do. That's what that's we what do. We do. We I love you. Thank push. you so much I for being you, here. Bye, y'all. God See bless you America. See you again soon. Bye.